The Catholic doctrine is not that one can earn one's way into heaven. That is not Catholic doctrine. Catholic doctrine would say, from the moment of baptism, if you do not commit a sin, in a mortal sin, in the afterwards, you are, you are going to enter heaven, right? That is Catholic doctrine, right? Because that is the moment of grace has been received and you have then continued to live that grace out. From the moment of infant baptism. From the moment of infant baptism, so, correct. Okay. From the moment of the substantiation of grace. Again, in the same way that you, you would argue as a Calvinist that irresistible grace cannot be resisted, right? It, that is the whole point of irresistible grace. It cannot be resisted by the human being. The, bat, the, the infant has no methodology of resisting the grace of baptism, right? Again, it comes back to the whole methodology of baptism and how important it is to the Catholic Church. Um, this, this, this is not saying that, therefore, you need to go and do a whole load of works. The Catholic view of justification would be that it is a reformative process, right? You are inscribed with grace, and then you then go on to build grace through works, right, which as the letter of James, and I'm sure we can argue a lot, a lot about- Faith without works is yeah, dead. Exactly, right. And so you are not saved by faith alone, right? That is literally what the Bible says. That is literally what the, the letter of James says. It doesn't make a distinction between dead faith and alive faith. It doesn't make that distinction. It just says you are not saved through faith alone. So as a result, you know, coming back to that point, that is why the Catholic view is like, in the same way that you can't have a coin without two sides, you must have faith, you must have works. Right to exemplify the faith that you have, right? Of course, go. of course, we oh, we could go talk about the faith alone thing for so long because, of course, of course I mean, I mean there, there's I could, bib, yeah, I mean, there's biblical support that it's not by faith alone. Of course, I would say that there's not, there's not, there's too much context and too many references. Well, we, what of would God you say is the context, just so we can hear you out on that because I think that's a huge. I think, yeah. Well, <sighs> hey guys, quick video explaining James chapter two, a passage that is often misunderstood and misused to teach a works-based salvation. First and foremost, it is imperative that we establish the audience being addressed. Notice what it says in verse 1. My brethren, don't miss that, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Notice how these brethren are encouraged to have not the faith of Christ with respect of persons, implying what? that they already have faith in Jesus Christ, signifying the fact that these are saved individuals. These are believers. These are the brethren. Look down at verse 12. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Verse 14. What doth it profit? Again, my brethren, these are saved individuals, these are believers. Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Now, contextually, this salvation is in reference to the judgment alluded to in verses 12 and 13. Notice again, so speak ye and so do as they that shall be what? Judged by the law of liberty. For he, this individual, shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. There is a direct relation between our dealing with others and God's dealing with us. I'll say that again. There is a direct relation between our dealing with others and God's dealing with us. If I, as a believer, show no mercy, despise the poor, and have respect to persons, God will judge me and chasten me as his child. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, notice this, God dealeth with you, how? As with sons, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? So again, the question is, can faith alone save me from the corrective chastisement of God? The answer is no. Look at verse 14 again. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Again, can faith save him? No. Verse 15. 
If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. Again, notice this. What doth it profit? This question is put forth twice in three verses. What doth it profit? We are dealing with the profitability of our faith. Is your faith profitable to others? Is my faith profitable to others? Watch this. Our faith is profitable to others when accompanied by works and unprofitable to others when our faith is what? Without works. Titus chapter 3 verse 8 says, This is a faithful saying, And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Notice this. That they which have believed in God, believers, might be careful to maintain what? Good works. Why? To be saved? No. To stay saved? No. To prove that they are saved? No. These things, notice this, are good and what? Profitable unto who? Men. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, Let your light so shine before men. Why? That they may see your what? Good works and what? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 12 says, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, don't miss this, they may by your what? Good works, which they shall behold or see or witness, glorify God in the day of visitation. The word of God is crystal clear that salvation is not of works. Again, we are saved, how? by grace through faith alone, plus nothing, minus nothing. However, our works as believers are beneficial and profitable to others, and therefore we should be careful to maintain them. Why? For the profit of our fellow man. Look at verse 17 of James chapter 2. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Again, dealing with what? The profitability of our faith. The Bible states that faith without works is dead, meaning what? Faith without works is unprofitable. Look at verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Faith alone justifies us in the sight of God. Faith plus works justifies us in the sight of man. Two justifications we cannot confuse. Romans chapter 4, starting off in verse 1, the word of God says, What shall we say then? that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. Don't miss this. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, notice this, but not before God. James chapter 2 is an admonition to the believer, the saved individual, to have a faith accompanied by works. Again, not to be saved. Salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. Not to stay saved, not to prove you are saved, but rather to be profitable to both believers and unbelievers alike. So, friend, is your faith profitable to others or is your faith dead?